in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Again, I remind you that conferences like this essentially grant us access to light because in this kingdom, we arise and we shine only to the degree to which we obtain light. It says, arise, shine for thy light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. So when we are bankrupt of light, it is impossible to be able to rise to that prophetic position that God intends for us. Hallelujah. I have profound regard and respect for any ministry that invests in the teaching of the word because the only way believers grow is through the word. Hallelujah. And that from a child, thou hast known the Holy Scripture which is able to make you wise even unto salvation. It says, and now I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified hallelujah praise the name of the Lord so yesterday we began to discuss um, two dimensions of Jesus Christ that we said were important for the efficiency of the believer we looked at Jesus as Savior and then we looked at Jesus as King just a two or three minutes recap for the sake of those who are just connecting and we said that there are a number of differences in those dimensions for instance when we deal with Jesus as Savior the entire work of Jesus as Savior is captured in what we call the gospel of salvation that is a revelation of his substitutionary sacrifice towards man and creation and that when we reveal Jesus as Savior man is revealed as a helpless person who is unable to attain unto a position of righteousness by himself are we together man does absolutely nothing except to receive that which has been finished but then when we move to Jesus as King the scenario changes Jesus is now not just someone who is going to die. He's an exalted king seated on a throne. And man is no longer the weak, helpless person. But is now, number one, a son in the kingdom, the son of the king. And number two, an ambassador. Are we together? And we did say that we have a twofold mandate when we discuss Jesus as king. Number one our mandate to the king we have an obligation to the king and number two we have a mandate from the king to the nations are we still together and we discussed that our mandate to the king is complete loyalty surrender and obedience as simple as it sounds it will take the engracing of the spirit for you to be able to do that hallelujah to get to a point where you can say nevertheless not my will but yours be done and I did tell us that when we deal with Jesus as Savior the gift is the same to everyone regardless who you are it is the gift of life eternal from the worst sinner to the most self-righteous person you you are given the same gift but when we now begin to discuss kingdom there are rewards you don't talk of rewards when you deal with Jesus as Savior. Everything there is a gift. But when you come to the kingdom, there are rewards. And that those rewards are according to the degree to which you are submissive, 
you are surrendered and obedient i was so blessed hearing um um, Dr. Lumide Emanuel discourse on Deuteronomy talking about obedience Deuteronomy 28 for instance from verse 1 and 2 it says it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all that I command you this day that you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth and then that these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you there is a condition he says if ye be willing and obedient the bible says you shall eat the good of the land every land has good but your portion is delivered to you at the instance of obedience are we together the creed the law the modus operandi in the kingdom is obedience in fact in one word faith is defined as obedience that means whatever it is that you do in this kingdom if it does not translate to loyalty surrender and obedience then you are not going to get any reward in this kingdom and you will impede your own growth so I did tell us that there are rewards in this kingdom and then that we have our mandate and obligation to the king not just to worship him your worship is simply an expression of loyalty an expression of surrender and an expression of obedience are we together now this morning i want to discuss just to continue from where we left off that we have a mandate from the king so when you meet the king when you're done doing business with the king he leaves you with an assignment he leaves you with a mandate from him to the nations this is very powerful so you know responsible kingdom citizens because any one of them who claims to have met the king will always live with an assignment to the nations there is no one who meets the king and just says well i just worshiped him i love the king no if you meet the king there will be an assignment given to you we call it different names we call it purpose we call it kingdom advancement but it is the the, the mandate this is the desire from the heart of the king and like it was in Isaiah chapter 6 when you read the Bible says in the year that King Uzziah died I Isaiah saw the Lord remember he says that he was high and lifted up then he began to describe that the train of his robe filled the temple there's no point discussing this but in ancient times the royalty of the king was also seen by the extent of his train so when he says the train of his robe filled the temple it was an attempt to describe the extent of majesty are we together and when isaiah saw him isaiah broke down and said woe is me for i am undone he called himself a man of unclean lips and that i dwell amidst the people of unclean lips the bible says one of the seraphs took a live coal and touched his lips and says your iniquity has been rolled away from you and then there was a call in heaven it says who shall we send and who shall go for us and isaiah said here am i send me this one is not a savior discussion this is the king desiring that something be done to the nations and a man is availing himself every time you see loyalty every time you see surrender and every time you see obedience you will always see power and you will always see results please do not forget this it is a modus operandi in the kingdom if you ever find power without loyalty obedience and surrender proceed and um, preceding it it is witchcraft you can simply test the genuineness of spiritual power by using the index of loyalty to god surrender to the king and obedience if you find these tripartite expressions preceding the manifestations of power and results it is authentic from god it is impossible to have access to genuine spiritual power that was obtained from the king by his spirit in the absence of loyalty the absence of surrender and the absence of obedience are we together hallelujah praise the name of the Lord so our mandate from the king please write if you're writing 
our mandate from the king Jesus as king now is to be an extension please write our mandate from the king is to be an extension of his wisdom an extension of his power an extension of his glory to the nations of the earth the Bible simply describes us with respect to the king and his agenda as ambassadors and as witnesses this is a very important concept you must understand our mandate from the king is to be an extension of his wisdom to be an extension of his power to be an extension of his glory to the nations hallelujah this is what it means to be an ambassador this is what it means to be a witness now theologically speaking believers are classified twofold when we describe believers theologically speaking we describe believers number one according to identity and number two according to function when believers are classified according to identity the Bible uses descriptions like heirs of God joint heirs with Christ are we together in John 15 he says I am the vine and ye are the branches so when the Bible describes believers according to identities it seeks to show the extent of our oneness with Christ our union with God are we together but then the Bible also describes believers according to function this is where it now begins to use descriptions like you are the salt of the earth Matthew chapter 5 from verse 13 and then it says you are the light of the world you see that now he calls us ambassadors he calls us kings and priests according to Revelation 5 and verse 10 that we have been made unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign in the earth the Bible calls us um, light and salt when you read Matthew chapter 5 Jesus teaching from verse 13 to 16 verse 16 says so then let your light so shine before men that they might see your good deeds and glorify your father in heaven when it has to do with the believers described based on their function you would see that God seems to be passionate about believers producing a certain kind of results because he's been glorified is tied to the excelling of the believers for instance in John chapter 15 and verse 8 the Bible says hearing is my father glorified when ye bear much fruit he says so shall you be my disciples verse 16 of the same chapter says ye have not chosen me but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide or remain are we Bible students so he desires that he be glorified every time there are results every time believers excel in the kingdom when they become an extension of his power and of his glory all of the multifaceted dimensions that are captured in the king do you know the book of esther when you read the book of esther the book of esther is a prophetic adumbration an adumbration is a foreshadow an acting of something that will actually happen are we together you notice that the reason why Vashti was banished was because she forgot that her assignment there was to be a reflection of the king's glory. Now she had her own agenda and it was customary for the kings to flaunt their wives, their treasures, their army. And he now sent that Vashti would come and present herself before his friends. And she embarrassed him, disappointed him. She had her own agenda. And the king, being a good man, did not drive her. He sought counsel from the elders. And they said, better drive this woman out of this kingdom. If you don't drive her, she's going to create a pattern that is inconsistent with your will. She will use her influence to make other women to start doing that too. And the king heeded to the advice and drove her away. This is an adumbration. When Esther came, remember, Esther also wanted to fall into that trap. And Mordecai reminded her. He said, don't forget that you are here with an agenda. She goes to meet the king, even though not invited. And by favor, the king lifts the golden sense and says, come in. What do you want? If she said, I want your friend, her man, dead, they would have thrown her too. 
but notice how she approached him she said I, i'm here to flaunt your glory i want to put a celebration for you to honor you and the king said this is this is exceptional this is what i've been looking for are you getting the idea now i'm here because of you i want to serve you I want, I want the nations to see the extent that you are king over 127 provinces. And would you grant me the permission to invite everybody, including your very good friend, Haman? Are we together? And so that celebration happened and the king's glory was so flaunted, he called her and said, repeat this again. Repeat this again. When she had proven her loyalty, when the king was no longer in doubt of her loyalty, she now met him and said, I have a request. And he said, say it. Whatever is your request, you have sorted. Now I, I mean, it's not easy finding a woman like you. Now that I have secured your trust, what do you want? He said, there is a man who is threatening my people. Who is that? Haman. Ah, Haman is my friend, oh but you are my wife what do we do now and the bible says a very wise king he entered the garden to think you see eh, when the realm of the spirit is against you he now came to beg her and the man came and caught him the king caught him around his wife and said on top of what i was discussing i've seen you doing no you are you are you are it's over for you he was begging how did i get here I'm discussing, <laughs> are we together? But you get my point now? That in this kingdom, you see, this Christianity of always approaching him, you're the line of tribe of Jews, he knows that you are just beating around the bush and say, God, I'm here again. This is my issue. Is it that you are not, you are blind? You are powerful, but it looks like you are not seeing. You see, those kinds of Christians never go far. But there are people who step in and, Lord, I'm available, I'm here for you. You use the wisdom of Esther. And the moment, listen, listen, the moment the king sees in experience that your heart and your life is all about his agenda, there is nothing he will not give you, including the things you did not ask for. This is a powerful secret. Our mandate, listen, is to be up and about becoming extensions of the king. Many of you here, this is, I mean, this is a ministry that is very strong in empowerment, especially financially. I know that many of you here own businesses. Let me ask you a question. When you want to downsize for whatever reason, what is the chief parameter that you will use in downsizing people? Inefficiency. Am I right on that? If you have a staff structure of, say, 50 people, and for whatever reason you want to downsize and take away five or ten people if you are fair and just and honest you will use the index of inefficiency who is in this company who has been taken from us and does not look like your contribution is significant and you may have to relieve them is that true all i want is for you for you to be glorified for you to be lifted all i want is for you for you to be glorified for you to be lifted one more time all i want is for you for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted. Listen, there are people who donate themselves willingly and say, Lord, if for any reason you are looking for a man, I may not seem like much, but one thing you can count on me is that I'm available. You would see weak and ordinary people but there will be mighty people that God will use. And sometimes you wonder and add everything and the equation does not add up. Because you see, whoever is committed to serving the purposes of the king is the one who secures his interest. There are no biases. He loves everybody, but he's only committed to those who are sincere and available to serve his purposes now this is the dimension of the kingdom that many believers do not know and so many believers do not know that the king himself has a desire 
the king himself has an agenda have you ever tried serving a rich man when a rich man in our world today when a rich man says i'm testy you will run with your own money you will not say sir can i have the money you will run with, because you you know what you are doing even if you are a businessman you will run with your own money and go and buy it and serve him because if that man reaches into his pocket he will bless you according to his riches not according to what you have done he will bless you according to his perception of what you have done that same man can look at you and say you're a responsible gentleman what do you do say we're well, just managing see me tomorrow and that's the end of it are we together yes so those who look like they are great in this kingdom are not great because they earned anything in themselves they are simply people who have become foolish enough to listen not just to reach for the hand of the king but to reach for the heart of the king what is it that you desire oh god even listen even in our world today i hope i'm blessing someone even in our world today when you find someone who is not after your money or your influence but is genuinely after your heart it almost becomes a charm like relationship you find out that it, that person may even be your house help and you get closer to that person sometimes even than your physical children when you want to give some money to keep you love your children but you you suspect that you, they, you, they, you can't take them to police station you can't sue them to court and they are aware so you now trust somebody come my dear daughter can you keep this for me and now sometimes they wonder and say what kind of unfair thing is this we are the children of this man and yet he's trusting this person because in this kingdom you see when god loves everybody but he does not trust everybody trust is not an impartation there is a track record of faithfulness the bible says moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful is someone learning this is very important so when it comes to fulfilling the desire and the mandate of king jesus please everybody listen the king has an agenda and every responsible citizen who wants to see power wealth influence i did tell you yesterday and let me remind you again that everything that flows from the king to the saints is with respect to his will do not forget this the prosperity that flows from the king to you that's why there is a difference between wealth and kingdom wealth there is a difference between wisdom, Sophia, natural human wisdom, and divine wisdom. Everything that flows from the king to the saints has a mandate to honor his will. With or without God, you can use the law of value and all the laws that you have been taught here, and you can access some level and measure of wealth. But there are certain things you cannot take away, like the sorrow component. But it is the blessing of the Lord, my Bible says, that make it rich and can extract away the sorrow component. Are we together? Everything that flows from the king to you, I remind you again, was supposed to empower you to fulfill his will. Lo, I come in the volume of the book. Even Jesus said, to do thy will, not to do my agenda. Jesus was very vocal as to the fact that his entire journey on earth was to do the will of the Father. In that similitude, that you walk upon the earth and you say, I have no agenda of my own. That everything I find myself doing is to bring joy and to bring um satisfaction and fulfillment to the king to the father even to jesus are we learning this morning so the bible calls us ambassadors the bible calls us witnesses there's no time to do this discussion i have a brief session this morning but then it's important for you to know that an ambassador does not promote his own agenda any ambassador that is caught promoting his own agenda will be punished from the mother nation is that true there's the u.s ambassador in nigeria there are many embassies in nigeria and when you get into the u.s embassy if you were blindfolded and they opened your eyes you would not even know you're in nigeria because the entire the physical space was designed to reflect the mother nation 
they do not pay the staff in the u.s embassy at least the ones who were brought in they do not pay them in naira because there's none of their business with the economy of the nation happening there they are still in touch are we together now yes this is very powerful they are there to promote the interest they love you but they are there to promote the interest of the nation that sends them are we together so you must carry this mentality that i am on earth I am in Lagos, but I am here as an ambassador. That means everything that concerns Jesus is my business. You don't have to invite me. The moment you mention Jesus and his program, I am automatically invited. So anywhere I see sinners, I am invited. Are we together? Are we learning? Now, let me tell you three things and then I tell you three other things and we're done. The program of God, please write this down. God's kingdom advancement program is threefold. I want you to listen carefully. God's kingdom advancement program is threefold. Is it alright if I define for you my concept of kingdom advancement? Will that be fine? I define kingdom advancement as every and any scriptural mechanism that is deployed to enthrone Christ and his purposes in the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activities. Let me take it one more time. I define kingdom advancement as any and every scriptural mechanism, any and every scriptural mechanism deployed. Are we together? To enthrone Christ and his purposes first in the hearts of men then across every strata of human activities this is what we call kingdom advance so every time we say kingdom advance in simple terms we are talking about the deploying of every scriptural method that ultimately leads to the enthroning of the christ in the hearts of men then across the cosmos across every strata of human activities are we together now and then I'm saying that that kingdom advancement, we call it different names. We call it thy kingdom come. We call it kingdom advancement program. Others even call it God's end time agenda. You are saying one and the same thing. And that it is divided into three. Number one, please write. The first dimension of God's program. If you really want to please God. If you really want to spend your life serving the king. These are the three things that your life should be about. Are you ready? Number one, world evangelization. Please write. World evangelization. This has nothing to do with whether you are an evangelist or called into the fivefold ministry. The Great Commission was a mandate that was given to everyone by the king himself. He did not mandate a prophet, so you can't say the prophet slept or forgot or prophesied in part. It was Jesus himself that commission and brought the agenda of the great commission are we together world evangelization what does that mean the harvest in simple terms bringing nations to the obedience of the faith that anyone who finds himself right now participating in any scriptural way to make the world this harvest this agenda of god of world evangelization come to pass i can assure you you have secured the backing of the king number two what is the second dimension of kingdom advancement are you ready the equipping and the maturing of the saints the equipping and the maturing of the saints that means that through your contribution you help the church, the ecclesia, the body of Christ to become men and women of stature and knowledge. Is someone learning? Whether it is through a book you write, whether it's through your giving, whether it is by setting up a local assembly, whether it is through your labor and 
and love in doctrine whatever contribution you make that can help believers attain to a point of stature and maturity God so desires for his church to be matured that even after his finished work he gave gifts to men he gave some apostles and prophets are we together and evangelists and pastors and teachers Ephesians chapter 4 says why he says for the equipping the maturing of the saints that the saints now matured will do the work of the ministry to the end that all of us will come into a complete man the fullness of the stature of the measure of Christ the Bible says not tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine and the slight of men wherein they lie to deceive so God desires that the church because the church is the only instrument he has to birth his purposes and if the axe head be blunt there's going to be a lot of energy that is dissipated are we together look at the vast potential army that King Jesus has on earth but not much is accomplished because most believers are still babes it took 12 men mentored by Jesus himself and they took their world by storm there were 120 in the upper room when the Holy Ghost fell and ladies and gentlemen from 120 people a harvest of 3,000 people came in one night and from 3,000 people they grew until they became a threat to society but what formula did they use Acts chapter 2 and verse 42 I will show you how the church grew the Bible says and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine are we together and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers take note of these four things the 3,000 that were saved were not just left to go home. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And those ordinary people became mighty men from city to city. Every time persecution came, it only multiplied the effect. And they scattered to cities to the extent that when Paul was in prison, he was not interested in his release. He was interested in a notepad and a pen. Right from prison. He will say, I'm in prison and I've heard that some of you are deviating from what I've spent my time teaching you. Let me assure you I'm coming back. And when I come back, can you imagine? Look at the mentality of such a man. They killed him. He came back to life. Too important to die not just claiming i shall not die he proved it with his life a man in prison in prison your prayer should be to come out not paul paul was in prison and which church have we not written to so every time they came to visit him how are you say leave that issue my desire is the king and god said what kind of man is this hmm. are we together so when you talk about the great apostle paul it was not just that it was in his destiny to write to third of the New Testament. There is no prophecy in the Bible that prophesies that the man Paul will write to third of the New Testament. It was the degree of his loyalty, his availability. Are we together now? That multiplied that kind of grace. That even the Peter and the other apostles, they, had, they first rejected him. But later on they said, listen, we can't fight this man. We are not stupid people. We, we were mentored by God, but we have seen a level of sacrifice and discernment. They had to extend the right hand of fellowship to him. That means in this conference, there are people who are supposedly ordinary, who came from a family that does not seem to have any pedigree, but by your submission and your loyalty to the king, you will touch something in the spirit that will elevate you in a way that you will become a wonder and a marvel to your world. It is true. This is how men rise. Hmm. The desire of the king for me to live is Christ, he says, and to die is gain. Can you imagine that? At the zenith of his apostolic ministry, here's what he had to say, that I may know him. Not that I may be great. Not that I may have more things that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Out of the 12 disciples, 
there was one who survived anything until they did not even know what to do with him. They threw him in the Isle of Patmos. He's called John the Beloved, not John the Anointed, not John the Powerful. When all the other virtues failed, love remained. The one who chose to love, not just to use God, was the one that fire could have no power over. They threw him, according to Bible history, in boiling oil. He refused to burn. So the people just didn't know what to do with him. And do you know what it means to try to kill somebody and he does not die? And they threw him and left him there. That's how he wrote the book of Revelations. Ladies and gentlemen, when you read from scripture the lives of these men and women it was not just that they were uniquely isolated like that not all of them had the election of grace there is a concept of the election of grace but you see there are many people who through availability and the genuineness of their loyalty they have attained onto states and levels in the spirit that men will look at them and be dumbfounded an example of such a person was elisha the next prophet was never supposed to be Elisha after Elijah because ethically the prophet will come from those he was mentoring. He had a school of prophets. So the next prophet should come from there. But he found a man who was loyal. He found a man who was surrendered and he found a man who was obedient. He received a double portion. You can see that even with men, this same principle applies. Are we together? That means the major reason why it looks like God cannot do much with men. I'm telling you, it's not your background. It's not the kind of curses that have surrounded you. It's not true. It's that God is yet to trust your loyalty. God is yet to trust your, your submission, your level of surrenderedness. And God is yet to trust your obedience. I can tell you from scripture and respectfully speaking, I can tell you from experience, when God finds a man he can trust, you become a wonder to your world. You may have heard me say it many times that the Lord told me many years ago and said, son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. Yes. And I believe this with all my heart. Are we together? If you will let men see me. Now, watch this. I don't know if I gave this example the last time I was here or any of, of the meeting you may have listened to. I'm not dropping my Bible here. My Bible is here. So the center of attraction is the top of this, this uh, pulpit. Am I right? But is it really true that you can look at the top without looking at what holds it? This is King Jesus. This is you. The goal it's not to be the point of attraction. The point is to focus on him. That the world will see him. But it's impossible. This thing is standing here only because of the efficiency of this. That means if Jesus wants to be lifted higher on earth, it's not only him that will rise. Whoever is holding him and the banner will also rise. Are you seeing how it works? So when your life is committed to bringing glory to the king, he lifts himself by lifting you. It's called the reflection principle. You find that in John 17 and verse 1. Jesus was praying now. The Bible records that he lifted up his eyes to the heavens and he prayed thus. Give us John 17 and verse 1. Here's what he said. Father, the hour is come. He said, glorify thy son that thy son may bring glory to you. Listen again. Glorify thy son. Glorify Joshua Selman. Glorify Calvary Bible Church. Glorify your family. Glorify your lineage. Only that you get glory back. But here's what a lot of us do. Have you watched little children who beg you, they come and say, Mommy, Daddy, and they point their hands. And when you drop maybe something and you say, Give me back. They hold it back. That's what a lot of people do. So we use fasting. We use prayer. We use all kinds of things to say, Lord, I've been waiting. Send this power. And then God will. Anything God gives you initially is not all he intends to give you. I can tell you, God never gives you all he intends to give you at once. It is not how the kingdom works. Everything he gives you is a test. As much as that money was when you received it, it is still a test. So 10 million came because you cried and said you were a kingdom financier and it tested you. 
and he watched you for one month nobody knew where you went to and God kept crying like Adam my son where are you where are you where are you I don't see you in my presence again I don't see you in my house God is calling you men are calling you and then when he's finished you come back and say God I'm here again he said no 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 I'm not here. my love for you has not changed but we need to do something with this trust thing this is what is responsible for this balloon success you see that people rise up and then just come down because they do not know that you maintain your stand with the king by remaining ever trustworthy ever he gave one five talent the bible is full of the character of god that when you study you can learn god he gave one five talent he gave one two talent he gave one one that means he has more than 13 or more than eight if he gave one five he gave one two he gave one one it meant that he had a treasury that was a lot more than that then the bible said he went on a long journey and left them then he came back look at the character of god you would think because he has so much he will not come back when he fed the people he said gather the crumbs i don't waste let them go but gathered what would he do with the crumbs when he could multiply it the one who had five was a faithful steward he went about doing his business made five more the one who had two brought two more but the guy who had one you see he went to bury his talent you bury seeds not talents no you multiply talents you refine them but he went to go and bury the talent and it did not grow because it was not a seed and when he came back he called all of them and said all right you are stewards not owners so give me your stewardship oh i had five i've gotten five more he said you've passed the test the goal was not talent i want to give you authority over nations i taught you yesterday that when god gives you authority over things it is the least level of spiritual authority that you can command resources you can command the material world believe me as mighty as that is that is the least level of authority when you show faithfulness in that unrighteous mammon then he will commit to you the true riches of the kingdom are we together now he will grant you access to the hearts of men when God gives you authority over men and over nations like Gideon you will sound a shofar and 33,000 people will come because you have authority this see these rankings in the spirit have physical expressions you can know who is standing where and the greatest authority the bible records that can be trusted to man is authority over god's program it's like it's like pastor traveling and he calls you and he says for the next um I want something to happen an empowerment program to happen here and you are in charge that is a level of trust indeed are we together so for many of us here we have not yet come to a point where we realize that the king has a need and before we start talking of issues of purpose and the rest my assignment is to bring you to a point where you find out that the creed of the kingdom is your loyalty your surrenderedness and your obedience please do not forget this in the name of jesus do not forget this for as long as you live anytime you see god using a man and a woman not just in ministry in any dimension of kingdom exploits at all i want you to know that behind everything you see the glitz the glamour the fame is a man who has fulfilled that condition of surrender of loyalty and of obedience i assure you by god there is no amount of prayer and fasting there is no amount of um, religious activity that will replace in fact all of them should work together to lead you to a place of loyalty surrender there are many people who pray there are many people who fast but the, the level of rebellion against the king 
That's why you find out that people sometimes they submit. They can even read their Bible sincerely. They can go and lock themselves somewhere and respectfully speaking, at the end of it, they return back with familiar spirits. Because before your activity is accepted, your heart condition is the greatest thing God looks at. God is not carried away by your tears. He's touched but moved by the sincerity of your heart. This heart condition vetoes your Bible study. It vetoes your prayer. It vetoes your coming to church. If your heart is not right, you have no business with the king in this kingdom. No wonder the psalmist will say, try my heart. Is that true? try my heart test my thoughts and says if you see in me any way that is wicked purge me and bring me to the way everlasting king jesus now let me just tie this and then we'll find somewhere to pray to be an effective ambassador or to be an effective witness there are three stages you must pass through. Please write this down. This is now proper discipleship. To be an effective ambassador, God is preparing you now to release you to your world. To be an effective ambassador, an effective witness. There are three levels that you must pass through, non-negotiable. Number one, transformation. This is the first level of dealings that you must go through. Seasons of intense transformation. When you want to know the power of transformation, you have to study insects. An insect transits, as we know, from egg, larva, am I right on that? Pupa and then adult. It's the same insect, but the insect cannot, what the egg can do, the larva cannot do. What the lava can do, the pupa cannot do. It is the full-grown adult insect that can fly and do a lot of things. That means within the same insect are possibilities, but he has to change states to be able to manifest them. Within the same you is the ability to take the healing anointing. Within the same you is the ability to be a billionaire. Within the same you is the ability to be a leader over nations in politics and governance, but not this version of you. So when God comes to you and says, follow me, that begins the process of transformation. Are we together now? The king demands that you come as you are, but you are not used as you are. You come as you are, but you are made. He's a maker. Please listen. There are many people praying prayers that cannot be answered at the level they are. It becomes a risk to the body of Christ if the prayer you are crying for is being answered. Lord, I pray that you give me one billion. And God says, I can give. I am a giver. It is, it is the signature of fatherhood to give. But this level of you, <clears throat> with the flesh that is alive, with the fleshly encumbrances is going to be very difficult. You cannot be trusted. You see, most believers do not understand that transformation qualifies you to manifest deeper things in the spirit. Transformation qualifies you to manifest deeper things in the spirit. It is not as though God does not want to use many people. It is not as though God does not want to lift people. Like pastor said earlier on, there are no grandsons of God. We are all sons in the kingdom. But you see, our possibilities depend on our extent of transformation. So the Bible says it this way. Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. It says, I beseech you therefore by the mercies of God that ye offer your bodies, present your bodies unto God a living sacrifice he says holy and acceptable unto god he calls it your reasonable act of worship let's go to verse 2 verse 2 says and be not conformed to this world is the greek word aeon the thinking pattern that comes with the system that means there is a way that the world thinks there is a way that the, the cosmos that is under the influence of the antichrist spirit i hope you know that the antichrist spirit is what powers the antichrist system and that the antichrist system has a way that they think 
and he says do not be conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind and that you will be able to prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 it says let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus he did not just excel because he was the son of God he excelled because there was a mentality this is the value of mentorship the value of doctrine the value of discipleship that you begin to receive a new orientation that is consistent with the word of God now we come from different cultures we come from different societies we come from different exposure levels different sociological contexts but when we come to the kingdom watch this this is why God sends a teaching priest like your man of God what is his assignment to begin to help you to bring you methodically to a place of understanding to give you a kingdom mentality do not forget this it takes a kingdom mentality to command kingdom exploits it takes more than a sincere desire a kingdom mentality Daniel 11 and verse 32 B but the people that do know their God the Bible records it says they shall be strong and they shall do exploits you know what that means please look up there are three levels here it says number one knowledge the people that do know it starts with knowledge then the second level is transformation they shall be then exploits they shall do so knowledge transformation and exploits is someone learning the first level you must pass through is the level of transformation and it takes a long time to be transformed because there are many age-old ideas about God, about life, about Satan, about wealth, about poverty. You see that the process of transformation is not something that happens in a weekend. It takes a long time. God has to now give you a new orientation. My question for you this morning, please look up. What do you believe about God? What do you believe about Satan? What do you believe about poverty? What do you believe about wealth? What do you believe about failure? What do you believe about success? What do you believe about death? What do you believe about life? What do you believe about yourself? What do you believe about your destiny? The answer to all this is captured in mentorship and discipleship. It is the assignment of the teaching priest to now begin to unveil the new you in light of scripture. Are we together? So that when you have spent two, three, four, five years in church, it's not just the names of church members you should know alone. You should understand the ways of God. The modus operandi of the kingdom with the precision of an expert to the point that when you see someone, you can simply diagnose the person's situation using the reference of the knowledge you have gotten in scripture. So, if someone comes to you and says, look, nothing is working in my life. I mean, completely no favor no open doors as a believer who has been properly mentored you should know how to attend to that person and it's not just let's pray mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. based on what you were taught diagnose this situation even as i'm saying it now use your mind to diagnose the situation what would if someone comes to you now and says i cannot sleep there are all kinds of spirits oppressing me i wake up in the morning more tired than i was before i slept what will you do don't answer just think so that even if you are wrong at least you don't feel bad MOG what is going to be the scriptural so remember you are born and you want to go to the nations now here is a specimen what are you going to do you will be surprised how that many believers the only thing they know is okay let's pray father you see this situation help the person in Jesus name that's a very sincere approach but the Paul says he that strives for mastery is not crowned unless he strives lawfully you can attain to a point of mastery the same way when you come to meet a consultant while you are shouting and say sir I had a pain and then joint pains he's just smiling at you and sometimes he may not give you the kind of attention you want you can even be angry I'm talking to you about my he says I already know what is wrong with you and he's not lying 
he will write a prescription and say return back rejoicing after five days day two you will call him and say nothing has changed he said just keep doing what i asked you to do by day five you are running around and saying thank you sir so that's why i'm a consultant respect the years of sacrifice is someone learning but many believers are not able to provide solutions because we are not transformed we are not transformed we have not submitted ourselves to transformation in one minute let me request that you lay your hands on your head and cry to the lord god of heaven father i contend for transformation beginning from this conference in the name of Jesus is someone praying lay your hands on your head and decree and declare that every thought line every thought process that is inconsistent with the values of the kingdom inconsistent with the will of the king that it will live your life now and live your life forever wrong cultural ideas wrong sociological ideas ideas that came from sincere people who may not be godly i like you to pray if you truly want to be used by the king to fulfill the agenda of the kingdom there has to be a season of transformation pray one minute in jesus mighty name we pray please look up now respectfully speaking transformation that i talk about is not just technological advancement i think i need to tell you what my idea of transformation is your change which is consistent to the character of christ so you can travel and go overseas and return with another idea which is still an egyptian idea you are not transformed you were only enlightened as far as secular enlightenment is concerned because when we talk of transformation i'm not just talking of moving from a typewriter to a phone i'm not talking of just from typing to swiping no that is important but i'm talking about the character of the kingdom the modus operandi of the kingdom now being embedded in your mind are we together so that your first response to life and its challenges is is as prescribed by scripture this is what we call transformation so many people are becoming western but not becoming kingdom minded or scriptural you can take someone from a village and respectfully speaking take someone from america europe put them together from a technological standpoint they will be east and west apart but from a cosmos standpoint they're all in the same place because they will be tested with respect to scripture are we together the second level very quickly so that we wrap up is empowerment i told you that becoming an ambassador or becoming a witness that serves the purposes of the kingdom demands that you pass through this phase of number one transformation number two empowerment why is empowerment necessary we'll talk more of that more on that in the evening you cannot fulfill you cannot achieve the agenda of the king in the strength of the flesh the strength of the flesh cannot achieve the purposes of the kingdom no you are contending against forces of darkness that are determined to ward off the program of god jesus himself said i will build my church is that in your bible and he says the gates of hell so the gates of hell were recognized and acknowledged by jesus they are still at work functional if god lifts you now and you are the person who will rewrite the narrative of your story of the, your family i assure you that satan is not going to fold his arms and watch you you need empowerment empowerment say unto god psalm 66 and verse 3 how terrible art thou in your ways it says through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves the disciples were already transformed but jesus told them tarry you already have what to say you know what to say but you are not aware of the contentions that will be coming against you listen believers especially if you are called into the fivefold ministry here i submit to you that by all means no matter how enlightened you are seek genuine empowerment before you become a casualty to yourself and to the body of christ 
you have no idea of the activities of darkness that happen daily to bring down anybody who names the name of Christ it takes power to remain if you are called to be a kingdom financier it takes intelligence value relationships to have resources but the Bible says strong men retain wealth it takes strength to retain lasting wealth are we together most people lack strength that if you turn aside in the day of battle the spiritual diagnosis is that your strength is small hmm. empowerment it's a secret that i learned early in ministry and it's an aspect of my life in being a witness and an ambassador that i do not joke with because i realize that to birth the purposes of god with respect to the assignment is committed to my hands is power dependent power dependent mommy it takes power more than compassion to raise children that the devil will not hijack it takes power to take care of five children Plus, you know how it is in Africa, 15 others that are connected to you. They don't know you, but as you rise, they will find you. They will say, I look related to you. And they will investigate and say, I'm truly related to you. <laughs> are we together? Nobody takes care of himself alone in Africa. You are joking. You just don't know the story, but keep rising. You get to a point where everybody starts coming to greet you and say, we answer the same surname. There has to be a connection. say power. power one more time say power. power you ask the man of god he will tell you it's taking power to get to this this point and this phase in your life and even in ministry it's taking power to move and the value that god has given him to serve the body of christ is not just intelligence he will tell you some of the challenges that the devil will want to bring there's someone here you're a businessman there's someone here you're a man of god and you think all it takes to excel is sincerity i'm introducing a power component for you this world lies in wickedness it is it is a fact that the someone can get up and say why are you the one rising why are you the one doing well what what if you find yourself in a corporation where you are the only kingdom person not just the only Christian but the only one God can depend upon it takes power it takes power genuine power you need empowerment and I believe that in the course of this conference before it is over in the name of Jesus power from on high will rest upon someone and you will see that that is the missing factor in your business your store already have all the products but no power so you find out that you are deficient in many ways you are a man of God it takes power to command results results that will compel the nations to bring glory to the name of the Lord beyond the excellency of speech there must be a demonstration of power that the faith of the people will not rest upon the wisdom of men but upon the power of God are we blessed it takes power to be rich no wonder the Bible says thou shalt remember the Lord thy God Deuteronomy 8 18 for it is he that giveth thee the power to get wealth why would God mention power and wealth you should talk of power and sickness or power and the miraculous and he uses power for wealth the power to get wealth for the Bible says except the Lord builds the house are we learning I'm wrapping up except the Lord builds a house the Bible says they labor in vain that build it except the Lord watches over the city he said the watchmen watch it but in vain please listen to me he says it is vain to wake up early in the morning and to sleep late at night only to eat the bread of sorrow he says but he giveth his beloved sleep So if you find yourself struggling in your Christian experience, struggling to command results, and do you know, you know that you need empowerment when you have knowledge, but the grace to defend what you know is not there. So you keep saying a lot of things that are correct, but cannot be proven. You have enlightenment, but no power. For instance, Jesus can heal. Jesus can deliver. 
Jesus can restore. You are right. Now the sick come. But the power to make your speakings come to pass is not there. You see. And it's dangerous to speak without the power to demonstrate. Because in the kingdom, believers must hear and see. If you say the Lord is good, they must see that the Lord is good. If you say the Lord prospers, this is why people are tired of church. Because they have been hearing and not seeing. Acts chapter 8 from verse 5. The Bible says, and Philip preached Christ in Samaria. And the Bible says, verse 6, that the people gave heed with one accord, hearing and seeing. Hearing and seeing. It's not just to indefinitely keep hoping that the Lord is good. You can taste and see that the Lord is good. That you can say, I came to this church. I was down on my rent my children and as i kept hearing the man of god teach and releasing that grace look what my life has become now do you know let me tell you the truth a personal witness with results is powerful when they healed the man at gate beautiful when the jerusalem council summoned peter he went with the man who was healed to stand close to him and they said we don't have any charge there's nothing we can tell this man for many of us, the reason why our territories cannot submit to the governing influence of the king is because they respect the truthfulness of our speakings, but the power component is missing. And unfortunately, our idea, power is so missing in the body of Christ that we have reduced our idea to power to just falling down. So the moment someone falls down, at least it's justified that I'm anointed. Doesn't matter what you think about me again, at least... <laughs> not being sarcastic but it's really funny and laughable are you kidding so when something hits you and you fall down does is that power you know what power is the ability to veto the current realities of men and rewrite their destinies to be consistent with the will of god that is power that you can look at a man who came to church now and that person by evening he will be locked up and you stand and in the name of Jesus you create a climate of favor that in two hours what that man has not gotten in one year comes to him that is power genuine power look what Jesus did ten lepers and he says stand up go and show yourself to the priest the Bible says as they went a miracle began to happen there was embarrassment that was imminent in a feast are we together now and he said don't worry i'm here i can solve that embarrassment once and for all and then fill six pots he said go and serve the rulers that was the end of it one time he went to peter's house and the mother-in-law who should help them was sick another embarrassment again and he went and held her hands and lifted her listen ladies and gentlemen if you are a businessman the day you carry power you can place that contract on the ground and lay your hands you have been sending an empty paper with ink on it that's why people are rejecting you the day you add power i know what i'm saying don't you think i'm just doing pentecostal talk no the power of the holy ghost is a very missing component in the body of christ is the reason why we keep talking about so many things you see now many people are getting to a point where they are saying listen we are tired of church and the herbalist is saying i am an alternative social media is saying i am an alternative all kinds of religions are saying we are alternatives we can't tell believers to stop going to herbalists and stop going to shrines until we we offer an alternative that works Are we together? Some of us here have loved ones who are trusting God for healing. Some of us have been grounded by all kinds of demonic forces. And it is so painful to see a Christian who loves Jesus with all their heart. And, and their love for Jesus is known to all, but they never move forward. That is a bad description of Jesus. 
and the devil likes such people so when he finds a sister who is faithful in church a brother who is serving they tie down that destiny so that it becomes a portrait that misrepresents God that is the assignment of power the assignment of power is to rewrite that narrative that the brother you were laughing at and saying look at these church people he rejected bribe in his office you would have been a billionaire right now by just signing your signature but in the name of some Christian thing you said you will not compromise and then the God of heaven comes and lifts you do you know what it means when God's people are lifted it is a very strong message that even encourages other believers am I right on that let me two more minutes I'm going to request that you lay your hands one more time and say Lord where my life has been bankrupt of power in this season I insist and in this conference I pray the power components that is required to represent your purposes not just in ministry I'm not just talking of power to heal the sick power to go forward power to go forward in spite of the economy power to make progress in spite of the wickedness of men power to make advancement in spite of tribal sentiment open your mouth and pray pray on behalf of your children pray on behalf of your spouse someone pray the power to prosper the power for signs and wonders the power to raise the power that brings influence commanding genuine consistent ever increasing kingdom results for the sake of his majesty and for the glory of the king Hallelujah. Keep praying. You have won the victory. If that is true, it must show in your life. Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. Death could not hold you down. You are the reason, King. You're seated in majesty. Listen, please look at me. Please look at me. I'm wrapping up, but my spirit is so fired up. Just listen to me. Sir, do you know, with all humility, I have prayed for people who have brought charms, and brought all kinds of demonic things and said apostle i'm tired of this and sometimes i ask them why did you get this and they say in my sincere desire to rise tired of it's not like i'm an evil person but someone called me and said listen if it is finances you want it's not going to work by all this grammar you better come and receive something and some of those people and honestly some of them would tell me that when they received it for a while it was like something just happened and they started soaring before it backfired there are dimensions in the spiritual where the power of God is introduced to your life and it turns you into a wonder a wonder what is there about building a house that everybody is almost becoming a thing of mockery I'm not being stupid God knows that with your background by the time you contend for transformation if the only thing you have is transformation you will talk a lot of good things in your life till people begin to mock you what are the 12 steps to an exceptional financial life oh I've learned from Dr. Lumide Emanuel all of you sit down and you give an intelligent lecture are you seeing that and at the end of the lecture I'm not mocking you everybody comes out and you are still trekking you are the one who spoke smartest transformation but no empowerment 
There are many people like that. When it has to do with the educational dimension of transformation, don't come near them. They will speak and what they are saying is not a lie, but the grace to make it happen. There is something called the power of performance. It says, blessed is she that believeth, for unto her there shall be a performance. People teach on favor, series on favor, but you do not see it in their lives at all. He said, that which we have seen, that which we have heard, that which our hands have handled. Listen, I'm taking out time this morning because I sense God is speaking to someone that if all you do is to keep talking, your family members may die in your presence and you will keep watching them and you are saying, Jesus saves. They are getting sick. Jesus saves. Their health is deteriorating. Oh, Jesus heals. They are still getting sick. It is the absence of power. Let me tell you, when genuine power comes there, you will lift them up then say, Jesus heals. They will prosper then you say jesus lives the gospel was never supposed to be communicated bankrupt of power i am not ashamed of the gospel of christ he says for it is the power not just the discussion the power you may be a man of god here this may be why your ministry is grounded restore the power component you are speaking the truth you are not with guile you are a sincere person but for god's sake don't just say what god can do prove what god can do with your life this is a generation of evidence someone pray one minute lord bring evidence to my life evidence to my christian experience Bring evidence to oh no, my life, life with such a testimony a life that a brings glory to the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord. The results are not for pride. Life, Lord, the results are not for self-aggrandizement. In the name of Jesus, Makaposo Kashata. In Jesus' name. Amen. Watch this. Do you know how many times Jesus kept saying he would die and come back to life? Was he lying? But when he was in that grave, everybody kept quiet. They forgot everything he said and everything he said did not matter until the third day. If Jesus did not come back to life, even you will reject everything he said. With all the I love you Jesus you are saying today, you only love him because his resurrection gave you the boldness to say he's not a liar. Am I right on that? Imagine if Jesus was still in the grave and he said, don't worry, I'm still working on it. After 2,000 years, you just believe and then if some prophet comes and says, look, I spoke with the spirit of Jesus. He said he's in hell. He's almost there. Just for the door to open. The door has not really opened very well. Will you serve such a God? Let's be honest. It is not difficult to take the gospel. It is the proof to demonstrate it. Our fathers, many of them who have joined the cloud of witnesses today, men like Maurice Sorulo, men like T.L. Osborne, they went to nations and they brought a message. As at the time they were preaching, everybody was watching them like this. Others were even waiting for them to finish so they killed them. But when the power component came, let power come upon your business and you watch what your life becomes. Let power come upon your family. Let power come upon your goals and your plans. Somebody shout, send power, Lord. One more time, say, send power, Lord. Say for the last time, send power, Lord. Please open your mouth and pray. Send power to my life. Power to my destiny. Power to my ministry. Power to my finances. In the name of Jesus Lord, send down your power, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we cry for your power. We cry for your torture. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, send down your power. In the name of Let Jesus. Let me give you the last key. Apologize for stretching us. Number one, transformation to be an ambassador. Number two, empowerment. The third, I will just mention it, may not have time to discuss. The third is purpose. 
purpose. As much as we have shouted power now, power is only useful when it is within the jurisdiction of purpose. Purpose is now where God begins to unveil to you the role that you have to play as an ambassador. Carrying power and running away with it is like a high tension wire that is not coordinated. You are going to kill people. Are we together now? The beauty of power is that it is channeled accordingly. It powers your fridge. Are we together? Imagine if there are all kinds of wires in your house. All carrying light. And then they are all dangling from your parlor to your kitchen. By mistake, one will touch your head and shock you. By mistake, one will touch your hand and shock you. If you want to charge your phone, you look for two wires and draw. Is that a good way to? No. It is that that power is well coordinated. They move it through walls. They channel it properly. So that you get to a point where by the time you plug your recharge or you switch on your TV or your fridge, you see everything working in your house. It is not just power that brought it. It is power that was directed to purpose. Imagine someone who kicks a car and fires on 180 and just rests his head. That is power manifesting as speed but not channeled towards a direction. So let me tell you, because this is now the carelessness of my generation of ministers. We have contended through fasting, prayer and doctrine for power but we have not managed ourselves with purpose. So there is a lot of excess, you know, misbehaviors and all kinds of things people do with power, especially the prophetic and the apostolic ministry, respectfully speaking. All of this mismanagement is because there is so much power locked up, but there is no purpose. When you contend for power and you do not have purpose, it's, it's almost as if you will explode. So there are many things. They will call you to come and raise offering. You will talk for one hour and prophesy and preach and say this and say, look, I know it's just offering, but just allow me. And the people are saying, what kind of indiscipline is this? It's because until you find purpose, purpose is what gives value to empowerment. So all this power you have given me, Lord, to what end? And he says, I have given you the power to prosper. Now you have 10 billion coming per annum. That is too much money for your personal life. I'm telling you, you will think that is small, but use 10 billion for yourself again and again. You will see that there is a kind of problem only that kind of money brings to your life. You will solve the problem of lack and want, but the problem of wickedness and thieves and distrust. So the 10 billion is coming because God expects that you will know the purpose, that no crusade should happen around you without your seed going. You see, so the more you are channeling that money to purpose, you will see that as it is coming, it's not killing you. That's why a river flows unhindered. But by the time you put a blockade, the water starts building and it will now flood somewhere and even destroy the home. Many believers in church, and I say this respectfully speaking to even servants of God, while we are training young people in church, let's create channels for that river to flow. If not, when somebody who, say for instance, is in a youth class and you are teaching the person and the person becomes so anointed, so powerful, and the only thing he's doing is cleaning chairs, there will be trouble in that church because that level of power is too much for that assignment. You see what causes a lot of trouble? And the guy is boiling and there's fire rushing in his bones. He does not know what to do. The next thing you go to one member's house and say, listen, I, can I do a Bible study with you? It's not, it's not just rebellion. It is that power must be channeled to purpose. Are we learning now? <laughs> I have to stop here. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this morning, this afternoon. We bless you for helping us and showing us mercy. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare standing on the grace of the man of God. And I pray that God who has shown us mercy now, in the name of Jesus, will continue to show us mercy. Amen. We will experience tremendous transformation Amen. as we submit ourselves to learning, submit ourselves to doctrine. In the name of Jesus, I declare that there will be empowerment upon our lives. Amen to defend everything we claim the king is able to do and finally i declare that god will reveal to us with precision 
the purposes that are connected to the power that he releases upon us in the name of jesus may the lord bless you Amen. may the lord increase you Amen. in jesus might hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching this from and then if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin.